Hello all, it's Shifty here, and today I want to take a quick look at printing grids in survival. Now this is going to be something very useful to you if you want to get any sort of blueprint into your survival game, whether it's off the workshop or of your own making. And if you're new to printing things or new to space engineers, don't worry, this is going to be extremely easy and it's going to save you a whole lot of time. So it's definitely something worth knowing how to do. Printing in space engineers refers to basically any time you're using a projector block to project a blueprint and then you're using a whole bunch of welders to weld that projection. Now. I'll get into the details of how to set up the projector in a little bit, but right now worth noting is that you will need a small grid projector to project a small grid ship if you want to print a small grid, and you're going to have to use a large grid projector to project any large grid ship you want to print. Um, I definitely recommend using the large welders as well. You can use small welders in your printers, but it's much more efficient to use the large grid welders. They have a much larger AOE and they will make the whole process a lot more smooth. Regardless of whether you are printing small grid or large grid, definitely use the large grid welders. Now in this video I'm going to be focusing on printing small grid ships simply because they are the most common thing you're going to want to be printing, most likely. And they're also a little bit easier. Large grids are a little more time consuming to print but most of the concepts, if not all of them, that I'm going to talk about do apply to printing large grids as well. And the last little bit I definitely think you should consider before trying to print something is whether or not the thing you want to print is printer friendly. Basically that boils down to two things. Uh, one is the shape of the ship, the overall shape, like the outline, and the other is whether or not it has subgrids. So ships that have very simple outlines well, whether they're block-like or they, they fork a little bit, but they kind of just fork in one direction. These types of ship designs or rovers are going to be very easy to print, for sure. Uh, ships with a shape kind of like this are going to be a lot more difficult, and that is because you have to attach the grid that you want to print to the grid that your projector is on at some point, and then you will print from that point. So. There's really no good place on a ship design like this where you would want to print from. I could attach here, but then I'd have to print forwards, turn it, and start printing backwards again. If you start printing from over here, it's kind of the same problem. You can print that direction, but now you're going to need a really wide printer, or you're going to have to do it in chunks and segments. It's always going to be a little bit more difficult to print any ship that has a complex shape. It can be done, but if you want something that's simple to print, simple shapes, simple outlines are easy to print. The other thing that you're going to have to look at on a ship before you go to try and print it is whether or not the ship has subgrids. Subgrids are anything that is attached with a hinge, rotor, or piston. Everything on the other side of that hinge, rotor, or piston will be considered a subgrid. And projectors right now in Space Engineers do not support subgrids. So when you project the ship that you're trying to print, you will only project the main grid of the ship, the largest grid of that ship, and you will not be able to print all of the subgrids for the ship at the same time. Now if you want to, you can disassemble, you can go into creative or something, take the ship you want to print, disassemble all the subgrids, blueprint them all, print them all separately, and then reassemble them in the game, but like that, there's just not a good option for printing ships with a lot of subgrids. And this is not a ship that I designed. The rest of these are ships I designed. This is one I just grabbed off the workshop. I'm not picking on you or anything. You have an awesome ship. I love the way this looks. But uh, I needed an example of a ship that would not be easy to print. So I just went to the front page of the scene workshop and grabbed the coolest looking ship. This is the AI Scorpius fighter. And it is built by Allied Armor. Thanks for being part of the video. So how do you check if your grid that you want to print has a whole bunch of subgrids? Will it work? Well. You can try to project it with a projector, and if the whole ship doesn't show up, that's a very clear indication that there's subgrids on it. You could also go into creative mode, and you could just paste the ship. When you're hovering to paste the ship, it'll show you the PCU. And then if you just jump into a cockpit or look at anything, go to the info tab and check the PCU here. If this PCU is different than the cut and paste PCU, there's subgrids somewhere on it and you might not be seeing them, but they definitely won't get projected and you won't be able to print them all at the same time. Oof, all right, now that you have figured out what grid you want to print and whether or not it is going to be possible, how are you gonna actually go about printing it? Now, 
There are about a million ways to set up printers in this game, but we are going to do the easiest and most straightforward method. We're not going to use any pistons or rotors or hinges or anything fancy. We are just going to make a wall of welders attached to our cargo on our large grid, whether this is on a base or a ship or a station, it really doesn't matter. Just make sure all your welders are hooked up to your cargo that has your materials in it. And you can just make a solid wall of welders. A lot of people will do it this way, but you can also checkerboard them. So you can actually just repeat this pattern um, and make the wall as big as you need it to be to print your ship. But uh, this is plenty. The welding areas do actually overlap for these. So you don't need more welders. More welders will print faster because you can go into your welders and there's a setting called help others if you scroll all the way to the bottom you're going to want to select all your welders and tell them to help others that's just going to let two welders weld the same block at the same time and when you have a few large blocks that'll just make the whole process go a little bit more smoothly for you anyway once you have your welding wall set up we are going to build a projector ship now you don't actually have to build a fresh ship for this. You could use a ship that you already have built, put a projector on it, and then use that. But I like to have a ship dedicated for projectors and for printing other ships. I always leave it at my base, and then if I move somewhere else, I can take that ship with me really easily. And I can tear down my welder wall, build one somewhere else. And uh, all of my projecting stuff, which is kind of the hassle to set up, will just come with me with my projector ship. Also, it's important to note, at least on a planet, that your projector ship should be able to lift itself and whatever ship you are printing, whatever the ship that you're projecting and you're going to print, it's going to have to be able to lift both. Because there's no guarantee that the ship you're printing will print in in such a way that it will be able to lift itself. So yeah, definitely having more thrusters is good. In space, that doesn't really matter at all because you don't have gravity to contend with. You're not going to just fall out of the sky. You can put your welder wall out there and just fly around. And It might be really slow if you don't have a lot of thrusters to drag your ship that you're printing around, but you can do it. Another thing I also like to have on my welding ship, or my projector ship that is, is a landing gear, or in this case I'm using a magnetic plate. Just something so that after you're done welding up your new ship, you can cut it off, you can grab it with the foot, and you can move it around a little bit more easily. Also, this ship then, because you're making a ship that can lift a lot and move stuff around, it can double as a rescue ship for you. So getting a little bit more utility out of your projector ship is always a good thing. Now you might be wondering what this little tab on the front is for. That is actually the block that I'm going to be attaching my projection to. Like I said before, when you project something, it has to actually attach to the grid that's projecting it at some location in order for you to start building the projection. So I like to always have a little bit of tab on the front of my projector ship, and then that block will be the block that I grind off when I'm done building the ship in order to split the projector ship from the newly printed grid. Now before we jump into the seat and set up a projector, I recommend that you place your projectors on this ship in such a way that the bar is facing forwards and the cross is facing towards the top. That is the forwards and upright way to place your projectors. And also for these projector ships, I always place a whole bunch of projectors. I use this single ship to project up all of the small grids that I want to eventually build. And I don't ever remove the projectors. If I want to build a new ship, I'll just add a projector to this and set it up. That way, if I lose one of the ships that I have previously printed, I can always just flip on the projector and print a new one. All right, so we jump in the seat here, scroll down to a projector, which is not doing anything. Got to make sure to turn it on, and then we will pick a blueprint that we want to print. I just went ahead and chose the Harrier again, and I will label all of these. We will just remove this for now, but definitely label what your projectors are projecting because you're going to leave these on your ship. And then if you want to make another one of those ships, you'll just open this up, find the projector that has the ship you want to print, and you can turn it on. Make sure to check the box that is keep projection. Otherwise, when you're done printing it, the projection or the blueprint will be removed from memory. 
and uh, you'll have to go find it again and whatnot. It's just a little bit of a pain. Just make sure to hit the key projection and we are gonna leave show only buildable off. Now, a quick tip for aligning this up a little bit easier. I'm going to undock from my station and go into third person view. And I'm actually gonna go to my game options. We're gonna go to game, UI, and then you see here we have UI background opacity. You can change this. And you can put this wherever you like. I like it being kinda in this area, but that lets you see through your UI background really nicely, and that's gonna help us line up our grid whenever you're using a projector. I found this useful in other times too. You can change the opacity of other bits as well, but I, I find that leaving this up and leaving the background a little bit lower is optimal for myself. So once you have that, we can go back in to our projector. And we are I want my ship to be facing forward, so we're just going to, uh, we're gonna line it up. Uh, yeah, this, this looks good. We're gonna move this forwards, and we're trying to line it up so that the red block here is touching a block that it can connect to. So I'm gonna try and attach this block right here to the red block, and it looks like I did a pretty good job lining it up already, amazingly, just eyeballing it. Um, I'm just gonna move it back two blocks, and I think we're gonna be good. And you'll know if you are connecting to a block because the opacity of the block will increase. So I can see that now I can weld this block. Also, you will be able to target the block if it's something you can weld. So now I know that this ship is lined up nicely and I can start printing it. Once that is done, the uh, the process is extremely simple. <laughs> You're basically done with all the setup, now it's just a little bit of flying around. I'm gonna line up, I'm gonna use this welder over here just to show that this uh, checkerboard setup does work really nicely. Oftentimes I will also make sure that I have a button near my welders so I can just flip them on really easily jump back in my ship here, my projector ship, and I'm gonna turn off the projector for a moment. I have it on my hotbar so I can do that. And what I like to do is I like to just fly in as close as possible with my little tab there. Now, because I'm in the cockpit, this welder's not killing me, otherwise it would be. But once you get in here nice and tight, flip the projector back on and you will start welding. Now this world, I currently have this on creative mode, so it's welding extremely quickly. This is gonna work exactly the same in survival. It's just gonna take a little bit longer, but the process is exactly the same. So you'll just sit here and let the welders work, and when they stop working, you just back up a little bit. And I like to kind of zoom around and make sure stuff's actually getting welded the way I expect it to. Whenever it's done, just pop myself back a little bit. I'm falling occasionally, but I can just pop myself up as well. No big deal. We keep backing up. It's doing a good job. No issues here. S surprisingly quick um, welding things up this way, but you can imagine how long it would take if you were actually hand welding all of this. Even from a projector, it would take you quite a while compared to uh, just using a welder wall and and backing a ship up it's so much easier now I think it looks like it's pretty much done easy way to check if it's done is to open up your menu again go to the projector that is currently on and you can read on the right here this is just gonna be however many blocks you have but it will say complete when it has placed in every single block um, if you have functional blocks it is possible for it to say it's complete when the functional blocks are placed but not finished welding so you will want to just open up your menu here and make sure no blocks are red. Uh, if any blocks are red, you might want to just finagle your way around, but mine is perfectly fine, which means I'm done printing. The actual printing process was super fast. It's just picking a grid you know you can print and then uh, setting up your projector. And it's basically done. And now I have this ship here, which is completely printed and done and I can fly around and do whatever the heck I want with it. I'm gonna go ahead real quick and uh, I can just turn this off. You will have to replace this block. Um, just place that back in and 
then you're ready to weld a new one. I can flip this off, fly forwards, and say I'm printing a whole bunch of fighters. Uh, this is an easy way to do it. The only time I would recommend doing anything other than having a welding wall and a projector ship is if you are printing like 20 plus of a ship. Then maybe you might want to set up a dedicated system that will be timed and everything and can like just print you a batch of ships, but I found that doing it this way is almost always faster than going through the hassle of trying to set up a more complicated system. Like just manually doing it, um, like backing up the ship. Once again, I can check. It says it's complete. We now have two fighters printed up in a couple of minutes and it was super easy to do. Now I don't feel bad about taking this fighter out and uh, getting it absolutely decimated. Because <laughs> I can just print up a new one. And uh, also having the welder wall is very convenient because if you do have a ship like this and the ship has a uh, repair projector set up on it, I'm not going to talk about how to do that right now, but say you do and you've taken damage, you can just fly in front of your welder wall then with your ship and uh, easy repairs. Let's see, I just, just fly right here. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be it. Uh, it's a really easy process and it, it saved me so much time. Nowadays, I oftentimes do a lot of my ship designing in creative mode, even when I'm playing a survival playthrough. I will design all my ships in creative and then I will just come in here in survival and project my blueprint and then print it up. It's really nice. And I like to think of that kind of as, uh, you know, you've got your, your blueprinting, your theory crafting stage of building stuff. And I don't think it, it doesn't really break immersion for me. It's like sitting down on the drawing table when you're in creative and drawing up plans for a ship and then going in survival and actually building the ship. And you're just doing the building part in a fast and intelligent way. So I hope that helped you. I hope you have fun printing up ships and getting all sorts of cool stuff from the workshop. If you did find this video helpful, consider hitting that like and subscribe. It does help the channel. Either way, I hope you have a good one and I'll see you next time.